it is a completely new concept to most people. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Matter Pod. Today, we're excited to be joined by Alex. Alex is located in Ontario, Canada, and does virtual tours up there. And so we're excited to be chatting with her today and to hear what insights she can provide uh, our listening community. So thanks so much for being with us, Alex, today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, this is cool. This is definitely the first podcast I do. So <laughs> well, no, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Sometimes, sometimes people get on here and are a little nervous. And uh, honestly, the, the more casual, laid back and honest and open that it is, the more beneficial I feel like it can be. And so for sure, don't feel mm -hmm. any stress or any pressure. So um, if you just want to take a minute, though, Alex, we were before starting to record, we were talking about kind of how she got into virtual tours and stuff. And so if you want to take just a quick minute um and introduce yourself and your company and maybe talk a little bit about what services you provide in ontario that would be great sure so i'm alex i'm the owner of me tour inc we started me tour in 2020 uh, we serve southern ontario so pretty much that is niagara falls toronto and everything in between um, some areas outside of that as well what we really focus on is helping small businesses because we noticed during the pandemic, during the lockdowns here in Ontario, I'm not sure if it was the same for you in Utah, but we had three really massive lockdowns that were devastating to businesses. Um, during those lockdowns, you would see businesses shut their doors almost weekly, it felt like. And it just, it was pretty awful to see, right? These people's hopes and dreams and all of their money that they put into a business just kind of ending. So we wanted a way to still be able to help businesses stay visible throughout all of this, even when people weren't able to go in physically. So we started in art galleries because mm -hmm. people from all over the world are showing off their pieces. They need people to be able to see it from other parts of the world. Uh, really, really helpful for our galleries. They're still probably one of our biggest clients. And then from there, we've entered into the small businesses. So um, anything that you can think of, like golf simulators, chiropractors, restaurants, boutiques, we, we do it all. We're, I would say right now, the leading company for virtual tours in Hamilton. Hamilton is the city that we're from. There are definitely other great virtual tour companies that are around Toronto and Ottawa as well. But I think that we've really made a niche in the small business industry. So yeah, that's that's what we do. Thanks for having me. That's amazing. So obviously now we're moving past the pandemic. People are pretty much opening up um, again. And mm -hmm. how have you seen um, the response and the demand for a virtual tour change or has it changed at all since, you know, everything for the most part, small businesses are, are completely open and have been for a little while now? Yeah, so it has changed, I would say, for the better, because what we were hoping for at the very start in 2020 was we just want people to understand this concept right now. It's a brand new concept, right? Like, think about when websites were first being introduced to businesses and business owners were like, why do I need this website? I have the phone book, all of my information's in there. So we really do see that virtual tours are the way that the world is moving. It, it just makes sense that eventually if you're driving down a street and you see a cool building, you're going to expect to see a virtual tour that is connected to that building. And you're gonna to expect to be able to go on Google Google Maps and just find it there and look inside the building. So it's a great thing that that vision that I had in 2020 is coming true where people yeah. are in more demand of virtual tours because they realize it is a great asset to have on their website or on their social media. It's just one extra way to make people feel confident. Reason being too, during the pandemic, people really were aware of how they spend their time and their money, right? That's one thing across the world where if I'm going to spend my time somewhere, it's going to have to be of value to me. So people really put in research to see the reviews of places to really plan out their trips so that they're not disappointed and virtual tours help with that. It's yeah, the, the best Most way definitely. to be transparent. No, I completely agree with you. Uh, my question for you is I think 
you people like you and I are familiar with virtual tours and Matterport specifically. If we if those terms are thrown out, we automatically understand what it is and what the potential value is. But to a lot of the people that are your prospective clients, when you're trying to explain it to them, they don't understand. And so what how is how have you found is the best way to go about trying to teach or explain to somebody why they should consider creating a virtual tour of their business? The best way has been to add a personality to the business. So if we had gone in with no no face behind the business, I think it would have been really hard for business owners to catch on and realize that this is for them, right? So if we were just a company that was a logo, didn't have anybody behind it, it would be really hard to gain people's trust. So um, that was something for me that was really difficult because I've never done any type of marketing. I've never done any anything like this where I had, I didn't even have social media <laughs> before, um, before, making this business like I had co completely gotten rid of my Instagram and things because so I was like oh don't like social media but I got it back and I was like how are we going to build a business where people are being educated on what we do and then also building trust in the people behind the brand so that was the biggest part for me being able to show myself in different parts of the city different parts of southern ontario um, starting to tag businesses where then businesses started to follow me on our account realizing that we're somebody that is recognized by other businesses and that's kind of how it grew people felt confident um now it's to the point where luckily like i'm i'm being invited to different events as you know a business owner in the community even though it's something that is still so new to them the the whole virtual tour aspect and they might not fully understand it in general but what they understand is i'm somebody who helps businesses so it's you know like they're they're starting to see the value in it and over time in my instagram posts i work to educate so i want to show them the behind the scenes i want to highlight the features the values um it's it's all really important that's that's the way that i've gone about it really just being part of the community and being really open and transparent with the things that we do and i think that that's working for us that's really interesting i don't think we've had somebody explain that the way that they're doing education and teaching is through creating content and that's basically what i'm understanding you say and it's not yeah. just all educational content it's also there's some personal posts in there uh, as well to, like you said, put a face to the brand. So I've looked at a lot of um, Matterport providers or virtual tour providers, social medias uh, since we've been doing open house. And honestly, hats off to you guys. You're doing an amazing job um, with your social media. I'm just Thanks. glancing at your Instagram quickly. If you haven't um, seen Alex's Instagram, it's me underscore tour underscore ink um go ahead and and check it out because what they're doing is i think it's it's amazing like you said it's just the right mix between we're explaining the behind the scenes of what a virtual tour is why somebody should want to create it but i'm also throwing in stuff that is personal to to me or to you and and your business so i think that's that's amazing thank you how how often would you say, Alex, you try and post um, content on your social media? Twice a week, I would say. Um, earlier, so a couple of years ago, I was posting every single day. And it's we just had to get the content out there because there was nothing yet, right? But now that we have more of a following, I can kind of hold back on posting as much. Um, people really like to see the projects that we do. They like those behind the scenes videos as well. They like random videos as well. Like I posted something about just baking the other day and so many people loved it. And it's like, I guess you just have to remember that yes, people are into the technology and it's super cool, but at the same time, they're people and they want to be entertained, right? Right. So. Yeah, um, I'm posting probably twice a week, three times a week. My stories are always super active though because we are always doing different projects. We are always out in the community. So 
Yeah, it's it's been uh, all together. If you were to ask, like, yeah, I guess that is every day then. Every day since 2020 when we started because I always have something in my stories for sure. So when you go out in the field to do a project for someone, you're mm -hmm. creating some type of video or photo and you're posting it to your Instagram stories um, no matter what. Do you post elsewhere besides Instagram or is your main focus just been Instagram? Main focus is Instagram. I read somewhere when I was figuring out how to market, like, you know, marketing 101 videos, because I, I do not have a background in marketing, that it's better to have one thing and do it really well than try to do everything at once. So I did, um, we do have a Facebook page, but it's kind of meh. Yeah. <laughs> like, I definitely don't update it as much as I should. Instagram seems to be where all, because Instagram actually has the demographics. It shows you all of the stats of the people, right? So the people who follow our page are predominantly in our, my age, age range. So 25 to 34, maybe a little bit older than that, um, right on 50% male and female. So uh, it's, it's where the small business owners are. It's where the people in Hamilton who want to see other cool spaces and who want to know what what places to go to it's where they are as well so might as well just stay on Instagram for now you know barring anything weird happening like I'm terrified of Instagram as well just just so you know like you know like all of the all of the shenanigans that happen Ugh. yeah I think a lot of times people too are just scared to post content in general because they want it to be perfect and they want it to be representative of their brand. And so it can be a little scary creating and putting content out there. But I think the more that you do it and the more that you just don't worry about it, um, that you'll, you'll get it right. But, um, I think what you said also is important to find one thing and do it well, because the content game can be really, really, really time consuming. Um, mm -hmm. and so, if you try and do too much, you can get too bogged down and you could literally be just posting on social media all day instead of actually out doing business that will make you dollars. But one question, one more question related to this that I had for you is uh, when people find your business and want you to create a virtual tour, what is the main way that they are finding you? How are they finding out about me touring? Great question. So a lot of people will message us through Instagram, so through direct messages, and people find our website as well. I'm wondering if they're, so I've been trying to look at the, the search engine stats, and I don't know if they're finding us by typing in something like virtual tour Hamilton. Again, that's the city that we're in but we do see local people checking out our, our page all the time. We do also have a billboard, uh, not, not a really a billboard, like a big sign that was made um, that we have up at a construction site in a city that's close to us as well. And we see that a lot of people have hits on that because it's got a QR code attached to it. So I think mostly it's the businesses who are serious in a virtual tour, who are Googling people who do this near us, and then our name is coming up and then they they ask us so that is one way you know through through the good old internet through our website and then the other is through instagram we'll just get small businesses who will reach out to me by name at this point and be like hey alex we want a virtual tour for our space which is cool that's that's always what i envisioned we just wanted to be somebody in the community who helps so what you're saying is the content does pay off and it does yield yeah. leads that actually come through and people want your services because they saw your content on social media yes yeah my advice would be don't be afraid to you know make make a fool of yourself like don't take yourself too seriously people are people and they like that they like when people are genuine they like for for me i've always been a nerd like since since i was a kid i was just not a cool kid <laughs> and and I, I posted about that one day I was like a picture of 10 year old me and you can see I was just the the biggest nerd right I don't know if you see that on my Instagram and like I loved playing the sims and I would play the sims for hours and then now hey, I, as played an adult, the, I played the sims too so I guess right? I'm a nerd with you yeah 
I bet you everybody listening to this played The Sims because people yeah. like the models, right? The models are awesome. So yeah, I still get to do that as an adult and I own it now. I am, you know, a, you you have to own your uniqueness and the, the nerd side of you because that's the side that is um, lucrative. Resonates with people can resonate <laughs> with it. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, one last question that I have for you before we go is, um, are you currently a one person or a one employee shop? Do you, is it just you that does all the services or do you have other people that work with you? I have other people that work with me as well. We're, we're a small team. I've got two other people who work with me. So, uh, yeah, we, we sometimes work on projects together. Sometimes if one of us is not available, then we work on them separate, but it, it helps. We've got three cameras. So that's, that's all we need right now. So how have you kind of divided up roles amongst the three of you? I'm definitely more the person who is up front and in charge of the social media, in charge of getting the leads. And then I've got somebody behind the scenes who's doing the books and um, doing the statements. And then we have somebody as well who will come out on assignments with us and do the Matterport because they're trained in Matterport. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how we divvy it up right now. I would say I, I do a lot of the scans myself, but then the other two people, they, they also do a lot of scans. <laughs> the reason why I ask is because I know there's a lot of, um, single member businesses out there that are just doing Matterport, Matterport tours all on their own and mm -hmm. maybe would like to grow or expand a little bit and get some uh, additional assistance. And so what advice would you have for someone who currently is a, a one person gig that is looking to maybe add a second or a third person to their team? There are people out there who definitely want to be part of your team. Like there are people who are trained in the equipment, which, which is awesome because it does take a while to get comfortable with the equipment that we use, right? There are people who are trained out there who want to help. Um, if if they wanted to add somebody to their team, I know that there are different ways. Like you can go on something like Fiverr and get somebody if you did want to. Um, otherwise, if you have a great page, people will come to you as well. Like we have people all the time asking if they can help us. And I wish that we could, but right now, just logistically, it doesn't make sense to add anybody else. Um, but if you're somebody who is looking to grow that way. If, if you have social media, just ask, you know, like put out a post that you're hiring or you want somebody who does freelance work, whatever it is that you're looking for, just ask for it. People are out there now. People are trained and they're excited about this. Was it kind of scary from a money standpoint, taking the leap into having another person join you? Like, did you feel like you had to create enough demand beforehand that yeah. you felt like you were so busy to a point where you're like, I can't do all of this? Or did you kind of just take a leap of faith and say, I'm just going to grow and I'm going to hire somebody? No, we were to the point that we were so busy that we couldn't keep up or not keep up, but we didn't want people waiting, right? Because our one of the things that we're really proud of is our fast turnaround for our services. Like, uh, you know, it's probably the same with you guys as well. Like you have a pretty quick turnaround and people respect that people look for that as well because business owners they they need things done quickly like their life moves really quickly so we were at the point where it was getting uncomfortable to keep up with those appointments so yeah we we asked um like a, a mutual friend to join because they were interested and we actually trained them on the equipment and that's kind of how it grew so cool I think it's a good problem to have when you have lead times that start getting longer and people want yeah. you to do stuff and, oh, I'm not going to be able to get to that until next week. That's that's a good problem to have. And I think, like you mentioned, it sounds like a lot of it can be attributed to your efforts on social media and your website, which yeah. hats off to you. That's that's amazing. Thank you. Thanks. We, we built something out of nothing, <laughs> which is like... 
uh, yeah, you know, you, that's a leap of faith in itself. And I'm sure it was the same for you guys as well, where it's not only building something, it's not like we're selling something that people know already for years and years and years that they grew up knowing. It is a completely new concept to most people. And if they've only seen virtual tours once, it was probably in real estate and they're not connecting the two and they're not seeing the value yet, right? So it's our job to show that value and to make it something, like I said, that eventually people, just like they were skeptical about having a website, now you don't see a business without a website. And yeah. I really feel like maybe 10 years down the line, it'll be the same with virtual tours. I agree 100% with you. Literally last night I was looking at some apartment complexes in the city where I live and mm -hmm. I was going to websites and I was actually shocked at how many did not have virtual tours <laughs> of all of their different room configurations that they have. They were literally the just audacity. Photos. I was like, where are the virtual tours? Like I should be able to walk around these apartments. What's going on? So and obviously that's because I understand and I'm familiar with the concept, but there, it just shows that there still is um, a lot of opportunities out there to create virtual tours for um, different clients that it makes sense for. So Alex, yeah, thank you so and, much for, for oh. the time, for joining us here on our podcast. We're extremely grateful for the insights that you shared. And, and the one thing that I would say is, um, Again, if you haven't seen Alex's Instagram, I would highly recommend going and taking a look at it. I think she's done extremely, extremely um, an amazing job with education and having her personal brand being represented. And it sounds like a lot of the success and demand that you created in your local town is due to the content that you create. We firmly believe in content creation at Open House. We spend a lot of time and energy, um, in fact, have... Um, full-time employees that are completely dedicated to literally creating content all day, every day. So um, cannot emphasize that enough. And I'm grateful that you brought that to light in this episode because we haven't really had a chance to talk about the importance of, of social content on our podcast yet. So um, cool. again, you, you've done an amazing job. So hats off to you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. No problem. We'll have to, we'll have to do it again. So yeah. thank you so much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day.